it looks like Fauci must have missed a key new detail with warning America. According to the Washington Post, for the first time ever, vaccinated people now make up a majority of COVID deaths by 58%. And while the White House can't let go of COVID, another huge health crisis is sweeping across the country. Pharmacists are running out of children's Tylenol after a crippling antibiotic shortage as more and more kids are being hospitalized with a debilitating RSV, which is a respiratory virus. Okay, Lawrence, I'm going to start with you. Were you happy or sad that that was Fauci's last press conference? Uh, I think most of America is excited about Fauci <laughs> leaving. Um, it wasn't always that way, though. I think the American public, people in the, the, the media, even us at Fox, we praised Fauci at the beginning, but it, it became the, it was the lies that did the marker for him. And, and he's the type of liar that lies because I want to help you. And it started with the mask. If you guys remember... We didn't have a mask I I issue before. People were rushing to the store. They were hoarding the supply. Everybody wanted a mask. And then Fauci, along with some of the other White House doctors, went out there and they said, the masks don't work. So people stopped getting them. That wasn't true. The mask didn't work was just a total lie. They wanted to hoard the supply right. for the folks that were working in the hospital. He could have just told the people that. Then it was the vaccine. He said, OK, if you get the vaccine, you can't die from COVID. We all know that was a lie. He, they knew that was a lie at the time. But he said he did that because he wanted people to get the vaccine. And then the final thing, and this is just the one that we still need answers on, was when it came to gain of function. He know for a fact that we funded that research. He know what he did. He played a semantic game with Rand Paul. But in his eyes, they needed to get ahead of the research. They needed to know what the virus could potentially do, so it well, was necessary. Well, you know what, Dagan? One of the questions, one of the final questions was to Fauci, can you tell us about the origin of COVID? A perfectly fair question, given that millions died across the world. And yet there was like a defense from Karine Jean-Pierre, which I'm going to ask uh, Greg about. But I'll go to you on the issue of, you know, why was that something that he shouldn't have to answer? Because the, his division at government was funneling money through the EcoHealth Alliance to the very lab that could be the site, very likely the site of the coronavirus, he's going to get called on Capitol Hill uh, okay. uh, to talk about this. I think about we, the origins I think we of have a tape. Let's take a listen. Dr. Fauci, um, only only thirteen percent. Hold on one second. We have a process here. I'm not calling out on people who yell. She has a valid question. She's asking about the origin of COVID. I hear the question. And Dr. Fauci is the best person I, to answer. I, I hear your question, but we're not doing this the way you want it. This is a disrespectful. It, it is. For, I'm done. Simon, I'm done. I'm Simon, thing. I'm done. I'm done with you right now. Wow. I'll let you just finish on that thought, and then I want to go to Greg on Karine Jean-Pierre. No, the only nice thing I have to say about Tony Fauci are two Tony Fauci is, bye. Don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you. Actually, I hope the door does hit you on the ass. Goodbye. He is a contemptible, partisan, power-hungry bureau hack. Uh, and the danger is he's a perfect example of why somebody should never be in a position of power for that long. He is... He was, to paraphrase Britt Hume, he is an epidemiologist. You should have been in charge of fighting the disease, not our economy, not our children's development, not businesses, not our children's education, none of it. Trillions of dollars of wealth was destroyed because of him. Businesses were crushed. Children had been set back for their lifetimes. And he, we're on a financial trajectory to a, a horrible burden in the coming decades, and he'll never pay the price, and I guarantee he gets a job from some left-wing hack. Uh, you know what, Greg, and what you didn't mention is the money that he makes off of uh, medical uh, pharmaceuticals. Well, uh, he's, you know, well, let's talk about Karine. Karine Jean-Pierre. Okay. Does she have a right to do what she did and shut people down? I mean, we can't ask a decent question, the one question the world wants an answer to, without her, uh, you know, running defense for this guy? Yeah, I mean, imagine if a Republican uh, back in 2001, you know, lashed out from the podium if somebody asked about 9-11. Like, uh, can we do, what do we know about not, whoa, not, the, this is the most important question in modern history. People should want to know yeah. how their relatives died. Uh, but then again, 
She's not honest about crime or inflation. You can't expect, expect them to be honest about this. I love, though, when they referred to Fauci as a guest. <laughs> like he's Taylor Swift making a cameo <laughs> to impress the starry-eyed members of the press. He is still an employee who is required to ask questions. He's not a celebrity. He's a civil servant who, like you said, makes a lot of money. He makes, I think, 800 grand from the government alone. This, again, is like love him or hate him. you got to bring up Trump because you always have to do this comparison, and that is he still remains the most transparent politician I've ever seen, whether he was right or wrong. He still loved the asking questions, even the dumbest questions he would ask. And oftentimes the dumbest questions would get the most interesting answer. That's the question that was asked by the reporter is precisely the question Trump was asking. Mm -hmm. Like, where is this crap coming from? That's what makes him closer to Americans than, say, these gain of function deniers that are currently trying to cover their ass. And I understand why, because I think that America... When we can't just blame China on this if we're behind the if we're paying for this. Exactly. So what's going to happen is that it, we may have a little bit of blood on our hands because we're paying for the gain of function, which created this thing. And uh, as for JP, it's amazing how she doesn't even pretend that she's trying to do her job. Do you know what I mean? At least pretend you're doing it. But she knows she's operating under lower standards. Right. You know, I mean, she ticked the right boxes. She doesn't have to do her job. Yep, and she's not great at it. And by the way, I mean, she's, doesn't a, matter. she's a spin doctor. She's not someone who gives information to the American people. But that's she has, her Jessica. job. No, she hasn't even gone uh, to medical Jessica, school. She's not a doctor. Jessica, the question that I have of you is, it was Fauci's agency and the NIAH that gave $5 million uh, in new grants for the same Wuhan link group, Echo Health Alliance, despite U.S. intelligence assessing a lab release, was there was one of only two explanations, you know, and yet, everybody on the left is defending him. Well, I think there's a difference between defending Anthony Fauci and saying that we should understand where a disease that killed millions of people across the globe and over a million Americans came from. I've been consistent on that. I want to know exactly what happened. There were a number of stories, starting with a, a pangolin, whatever that is, in a wet market, and ending up now where most people who I talk to, and they're generally of the liberal persuasion, thinks that it came from a lab. And they would like to know what happened there. So th that feels like a real piece of bipartisan agreement that we can go to. And there are other Western democracies, I believe majority of them, that also fund gain-of-function research. We're not going to be the only ones that were linked with funneling money so into this lab. So then why is the press secretary not allowing the question to be asked of him? That is so far above my pay grade. It, it would oh, not be I how I would comment all the time on what goes well, on. Well, what am the I White supposed House? to say? I would answer the question. If I was the press secretary, I would answer the question, or I would say okay. to my boss, I have to answer this question. What about the A other two things. lies that I talked about? About uh, lying about mask, lying about the vaccine. Well, yeah. the, so I think, and Those you, you lies. did, you did admit that it was other Trump, other officials of the administration, Total Jerome Adams, who was the Surgeon General, who has since apologized for it. I think that. They didn't know what to do when resources were so scarce. And obviously, doctors and nurses and the people who were working in the hospitals, first responders, were the ones who needed those masks more than those of us who could stay at home. Being and honest, America doesn't do that. We I, don't get to choose who the mask. Everybody, life yes, matters. You Everybody, do. life matters. A, a Everybody will still roam in the street. Everyone deserves doctor, the mask. Doctors working in the ER deserved masks more but, but, than me. No, Period. End of that. story. Can I just comment on a couple things? Dagan said... Anthony Fauci is this blatant partisan. He has served in multiple Democratic seven, and Republican administrations. Seven. He is not a partisan hack. He is to now. Point, stop. Stop. To the point about Trump being the most transparent about this, Carl Bernstein has him on tape admitting that he knew that the disease was airborne, even though he came out and told Americans that it wasn't. And I want to say something about Tylenol and RSV, because I went to my pediatrician with yeah. my daughter, who's turning one. And it was the only thing that she talked to me about, about keeping kids out of, they go to these little baby classes, right. you know, they go to a play they group. infect each other. Right. right. And I'm lucky. I, I had bought two bottles of Tylenol. That's a really serious crisis if those shelves are empty of children's Tylenol going into the holidays. And you know what? The shelves are empty. They're showing all kinds of, I know. In, in states up the eastern seaboard, shelves are So wherever you can, if it's good, I hope it doesn't turn into the new formula crisis, but that's something, there are no. no, there are no options like there weren't before. You can't give them a regular dose of any drug. So th that has yeah. to be dealt with right away. Right. She said AIDS was airborne and it wasn't. Good times. Oh. Uh, when he focused on the vaccine, 